We want to have a conversation about, you know, the culture of philanthropy in the country. And we are joined by two gentlemen from, one is from KCA University and the other one is from the KCA University Foundation. The gentlemen who are here with us this morning are Rogers Abongo. He is the executive director of the KCA University Foundation. And CPA Michael Ingutia, he's a director of special projects and alumni relations at the KCA University without the foundation. Gentlemen, good morning. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Kenya's biggest conversation. Thank you. Asante. So those are the hot seats. We had actually promoted and said that Prof Professor Isaiah Wakindiki, who is the vice chancellor uh, of the KCA University, was going to be joining us. You'll tell us where he is and why you're usurping his seat this morning. <laughs> but let's first welcome you nicely and warmly. CT has the day's proverb. Yesterday it was about monkeys. Today it's about a lion. Mm -hmm. Our proverb is for the whole of this week, which ends tomorrow, uh, from the country of DRC. What is said over the dead lion's body cannot be said when he is alive. What is said over a dead lion's body cannot be said when he is alive. Rogers. What do you make of this problem? Wow. What are the Batota Bamongu saying? <laughs> <laughs> what is said over dead lion's body cannot be said when it's alive. These are very interesting one. Mm. And uh, what I make of it by and large is, uh, you, know, uh, you know, a dead lion's body is not scary. It would not scare anybody. In fact, if anything, one would want to kind of run away from it because of probably the stench. But a live one would be very scary because you fear for your own life and safety. That's what I would make of it. Mm -hmm. That if yes. CPA Michael? As a, what I would make of it is a lion is a lion, <coughs> but only when it's alive. Uh -huh. And so even though when it's alive, it's very powerful, when it's dead, it's also dead. And so you can be able to joke and make fun about it because it's dead. It can't do anything. Mm. But if it goes back to life, then the people become silent. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can't say things were about that lion is alive yes. because you know <laughs> it has the power yes. yeah. to react. Yes. All right. So introduce us to KCA University. We know the Kenya College of Accountancy. Kenya College of Accounting uh, along Thika Road. Then it's changed into KCA University. So what's what's that journey? Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, first is to render our sincere apologies uh, to the viewers and the nation at large. Good. I was, I was waiting for you not to do that. <laughs> yeah, because uh, <laughs> you know, I'm sure uh, you know uh, our very good viewers and listeners who are waiting to here, the real professor himself, our vice chancellor and CEO, Professor Isaiah I.C. Wakindiki. But some uh, emergency came up early morning, really, that is work related that he had to attend to. So he was able to graciously request CPA Michael Ingutia, uh, you know, to step in and myself so that we are able to cover this. But uh, the conversation then continues. So KCA University is uh, a private chartered university. Uh, in Kenya and most mostly people when when the people look at KCA University they imagine and remember Kenya College of Accountancy uh, we were founded by ISPAC the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya that is in 1989 and this was out of a study that was done courtesy of the uh, National Treasury to check on the deficiency or the level of need for accountants in the country, a research that was sanctioned in 1987. So in 2007, we got a letter of interim authority to operate now as, as a university, uh, you know, as, the, as we were uh, com complying with certain conditions that were given before we were chartered. First of March uh, 2013, we got our full charter and now we are fully chartered private university mm. uh, that is fully operating by law. 
and I know uh, my senior CPA Ngutia will be able to, is a member of the institute by the way, mm. so there is the question of who owns KCA University and, and for clarity we are KCA University not Kenya College of, of Accountancy, Accountancy University. University. That's a mistake that most people make. Uh, so KCA is a brand. And probably a little history is that when we were becoming a university, the question about the name was really up for debate. And the reason we chose to stack with the brand is KC already was known to be a very strong brand. So we did not want to lose that nexus between KCA as a brand and, and of course, a name that would be tied to it. So that is why we are KCA uh, University. It's private. Who owns it then? CPA Michael. So in, so it's not the owner is, if you are to use the word owner, but the, the correct word is more of sponsor. We are sponsored by ISPAC, the Institute of Certified Public Accountant of Kenya, as my colleague Rogers has indicated. That's our sponsor. They started it off. They founded it. And they have also sponsored it to debt. So, in terms of the owner, yes, uh, you would look at it. It's ISPAC, in the context that they are able then to play a role in determining the governance of KCA University. But KCA University is independent mm. and regulated under the Commission for University Education. Mm. But its owner, its parent, is ISPAC. Is ISPAC. Yes. So, the whole need for establishing the college and then even into this is because like you said the national treasury they looked and they saw that there was a gap in terms of skills in the area of accounting it sure. goes all the way into auditing and everything related right yeah, sure. now does kca university still live to those needs then of training people in the areas of finance accounting auditing or have you started training people in other things so we have gone beyond initially what we started off with and it was a progressive growth and uh, so it, accounting and business but now where do you draw the line between accounting and business accounting and business is related to technology so then we had to start off technology and there are ict courses that we offer all the way from diploma to postgraduate mm -hmm. and then also we had to go to education because even this accountant uh, needs education they are related so we've gone into education <laughs> we've gone to social arts and so we have widened the scope in that context mm -hmm. but the initial was accountancy that was the immediate need but this need uh, is it still the core is accountancy still the core like the school of accountancy or the college it's of accountancy? a flagship it's yes yes and 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 by the way mm. the university needs own wisdom because you know we, we as a university we decided to retain our identity and so accountancy remains a core as a base because we have that's why we have kca uh, technical college which because by law tiveta requires that uh, then the you know issues about training of professional uh, the trainings that are professional in nature or externally examined then have to be done under a tiveta act and then that that necessitated the need so the kc technical college still firmly offers accountancy related but as my uh, cp ngutia has been able to articulate the accounting courses feed into the BCom or uh, bachelor's or business related programs. For instance, if you do your full level accountancy up to section six, you are guaranteed of about a year of exemptions so that you join uh, an undergraduate program, particularly by, by bachelor's degree in commerce, then you are able now to do your two years if you are a self-sponsored student. <clears throat> and sorry, if you're a government student, then you're able to do your three years. So that, that gives you some latitude into joining. So it still remains core and feeder into the business. But again, as he said, uh, the university is keen to retain its identity in the field and line of business. But now technology, when you talk about technology, 
when you talk about business technology becomes an enabler and actually where the economy is going where we are and where we are going what the future is then technology is very key and when he talks about uh, education arts and social sciences which is our youngest school but of course big in terms of population then it also goes without a say that the kind of education we offer is not the traditional education because there's a blend in terms of you know what how then do you infuse business into education and how can education then also support the basic programs that are offered in other different fields you know one of the things that um, distinguishes uh, universities or well from each other is not just the brand of the name but what they are best known for There'll be universities, they'll teach many courses. For instance, Edgerton was best known for the agricultural courses that it, it taught traditionally. Yeah. JKU had begun that way. University of Nairobi now was known for many things, but for the longest time it was the only university that taught medicine. Now, Kenyatta came in, Moi came in. I think you know where I'm going with this. Sure. Now, let's talk about private universities. You have Strathmore. There are things they are known for. Okay, what is case here? best known for what is this thing that when one thinks of one thinks KCA beyond accounting business and technology could you explain that please uh, so business is in terms of that uh, accounting is within business mm -hmm. and if you look at the number of accountants the the number of accountants in Kenya that have gone through KCA KCA is actually the majority uh, I, I believe over seventy percent of the accountants in Kenya have gone through KCA, mm -hmm. so that and they have had a major impact uh, in terms of the profession at various levels. So that becomes really a cornerstone, and also we've been able to proceed then to technology, uh, where by ensuring that our courses uh, we have embedded technology into our courses, and so that also then uh, has put us in a in, 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 a, in a commanding position okay. in terms of... Why do we need accountants, really? What are they needed for? What, what is this role that you will play in society that is so important that an entire university has to focus its primary and its brand on accounting practice? Why? So maybe, let me, let's go back to how KC was founded mm. and... Uh, the role of the treasury, national treasury then, mm -hmm. uh, then under the uh, Mwai Kibaki, uh, the former, he wasn't a president then. But for the government and for organizations to be able to run well, mm -hmm. if there is a place where there are issues on ethics and integrity, they are likely to have finance as an impact on them. So the, if you have qualified, competent people uh, carrying out the finance function, then you are likely to have more integrity in the finances. If you have integrity in the finances, then organizations are run well. Uh, then the government is also run well. And that's the reason why KC was founded. Uh, the Treasury was, was doing that to ensure that, through ISPAC, to ensure that there are qualified people that are able to produce credible accounting statements that ensure that there's integrity in the financial process. Because... The loopholes normally are on finance and procurement. Okay. So it's important to have qualified, competent people there. I'm going to ask you a tricky question, both of you. Yes. When the Auditor General does their work, or the Office of the Auditor General, these are accountants, they always come up with issues that, uh, should we say, require a little more explaining. If we say this is unclear and usually forget the national government within the counties now counties have chief officers who are in charge of finance i can only believe that they are trained and that they are accountants if i had to go by what you've said against the backdrop of the problems that one is likely to face in a political situation how does the association and well the gathering of accountants how do you ensure that your members uphold the integrity that Wanaguti has, 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 has just spoken of because what you say makes sense. But then what we read and what we see as an outcome of finances being given to certain institutions and what happens, accountants are involved. How do you support your members? Because they are your members. 
so that that integrity is upheld. Because that integrity is what now anchors this very thing that you're saying for all our institutions. You know, maybe in, I, I know again uh, my colleague will, uh, will jump in. W one of the things that I see, uh, City, is <clears throat> the, the first point is we are training institution. Now, the accountants belong to, they are members of the institute, which mm -hmm. is ISPAC. So ISPAC is the regulating body, is the professional body that regulates the conduct of accountants and, and generally the practices within the profession. So uh, I don't think we would do, personally I would not want to talk for the institute, mm -hmm. but I know C.P. <coughs> Nguti is a member of the institute. But one fact is, uh, let me talk from the university standpoint, that one area, because you ask about even why are we unique, one area that we really heavily focus on. Because, you know, there is the difference between the training, then there's also the culture of it. When you talk about issues of integrity, it becomes a little more personal because there are issues that you are taught, but then there are also the culture that you're able to develop either by, you know, way of your interaction with the community, circumstances around you and things like those. So we try really as a university to ensure that even as we train, it, it goes beyond just the knowledge in terms of accountancy, but it goes beyond to be able to, uh, you know, ensure that our graduates, those who then leave the KCA University, then have the understanding of the impact uh, and, and the importance. In fact, our Vice Chancellor and CEO, Professor Isaiah Wakindiki, has been very vocal and very keen on matters integrity and that that becomes his you know that has been his message all along and he has lived it because even within the university he has um you know the first thing he did because he joined us in march of 2021 and the first thing he did was to automate all our financial systems of course we have been doing finances but in terms of budgeting and everything else he was able to uh, you know, embed digital transformation where now there's a proper accountability, paper trail and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so that is just the need that, you know, the, the, the import, the thing to note that is very, very keen in terms of making sure that even as we churn out the graduates, mm -hmm. the issues around integrity becomes part of their software. But CP Ngutia may speak to the issue around the membership yeah. of the institute. Again, I may not speak on behalf of ISPAC, but I'll just we work very closely with them. And we work closely with them in these two ways. One, there's a membership category that ISPAC has of associate members. And uh, so these are people who are not yet fully qualified. And our students fall in that group. And we encourage them to actually join the institute at that level so that then they are bound by the standards, mm. the professional standards that the institute has. So that's one way we work with them, to, by trying to onboard our students to join the institute, so that then they are held to account. Because now once you're a member of ISPAC, like myself, if I have a professional issue, then there's a, there's a disciplinary process. I can be reported to the institute, yeah. I'll have to explain, and I can be deregistered, <coughs> I can be sanctioned. So that in a way we believe, helps to keep accountants in check. And when we are teaching, we teach the best, the, the standards that are expected of the accountants. Uh, and those are international standards. They follow the IFRS, so we are able to teach them. So that in terms of the financial statement, there should be no guesswork. Uh, what is supposed to be the statement? Mm. It's supposed to be at the international, uh, based on the international standards. So that's one. Then two, we work also with ISPAC, in terms of, for those people already members and want additional training, the university has a reciprocal arrangement with, case, with the ISPAC, whereby we give discounts to ISPAC members so that they can gain more knowledge, uh, even on other courses, mm. uh, that would then be able to help them be better accountants. Mm. So that's how we work with them in that journey, by onboarding and also by training. So it's continuous professional training that continues to inculcate the culture. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about now the foundation because KCA University has a KCA University Foundation. Um, you'll introduce us to, to the foundation, Bona Executive Director. What is it? Um, uh, Latif, KCA University Foundation was established last year, January. Actually, the, the formal establishment was December of 2021 by the University Council under uh, the variable leadership of our Vice-Chancellor and CEO, Professor Isaiah Wakindiki. And 
why did the university governance decide to establish the foundation? For, uh, let me start by saying that we all know the situation of the academia in this country in terms of the financial standing. There has mm. been a strain in terms of when you talk about universities largely, yep. you, you really talk about not very good financial standing. I would, uh, with authority, of course, with the blessings of uh, our CEO, indicate that KC is a very healthy university. But we have walked that journey, the turbulence that others are, you know, experiencing. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that is important to note, <coughs> unlike many other universities, KC University does not get any financial support from anywhere. We purely operate and run on the tuition fee that we collect from our students. Mm -hmm. So that means we really have to sustain our operations. We have to deliver on our mandate. But then we also have to, um, you know, consider growth in terms of uh, infrastructure and other aspects. So that is where then the university made a decision that uh, going into the future, because we have a very, very robust infrastructure master plan that we need to put in place, actually that already uh, we have started establishing, mm -hmm. uh, we needed then to have a resource mobilization arm. So KCA University Foundation is a special purpose vehicle for the university in matters mm -hmm. resource mobilization. Mm -hmm to targeting four critical strategic focus areas. Number one is infrastructure development where we need to execute a robust infrastructure master plan. In fact, if you go to KCA today, if you are there two years ago, you'll get lost because, uh, you know, you, you, the, the kind of gate that will meet you, you it, it's one of its kind. And yesterday, our vice chancellor and CEO was able to commission a perimeter wall that really is, is very magnificent. <laughs> and right now, we are talking about going into the you know, uh, putting up, uh, you know, more infrastructure mm. for learning, for students and uh, issues around around that. Mm. Now, the second one is about uh, endowment funding. Uh, so endowment where we work with partners and, uh, you know, partners are able to put in some funds. Uh, we invest this money mm. in either government securities or, or any other, you know, feasible investment options. And then the proceeds we use them to issue scholarships to students. So then we do not touch the principal. So mm. there are partners who then offer that. Then the third one is on scholarships. So these are direct scholarships. Uh, Latif, we have very, very compelling cases at the university. Mm. Not only our university, but generally across the country, where students who then would want to desire to pursue education for one reason or another, they face some hindrance and something happens midway and they either drop off or then they are not able to sustain. So again, the foundation really comes in to mobilize resources, work with partners to be able uh, you know, to put in funds mm -hmm. that would support such students so that uh, we're able to move together. And KC University coming from... Um, you know, uh, the common ground that education should be accessible. That is our belief generally. Mm. Education should be accessible to all. So as we do this, there's an attempt not to be able to um, tamper or tinker with issues about the kind of fee that people pay so that it doesn't become out of reach. And the final one is uh, research and innovation. Uh, and, and this is very interesting because we are training researchers at the university mm. and there is really need to, to work and support. So we work with organizations. One organization I would not mention because the active conversations around this research area is coming in to ask KC University to be a, you know, um, a knowledge partner. Mm. And one of the key pointers and areas to partner is the area of research where they bring in the funds and then our faculty are able to conduct research with support of our students in, in various uh, aspects and then of course the last one is on innovation because mm. there's really a big thing where we are largely focusing on so in a nutshell that is uh, what kca university foundation so the foundation for. is the one that goes to look for the money to come and support all these things that you're talking about exactly now you'll tell us how you are doing that and how you hope to do that after we take this break 27 minutes to eight o'clock Roger Sabongo is the executive director of the KCA University Foundation. He's here alongside CPA Michael Ingutia, who's the director of special projects and alumni relations at the KCA University. He's here, alumni relations and the foundation and resource mobilization. Ha. You can see why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Situation Room.
the only way to start your day. We have with us Roger Zabongo, the Executive Director of the KCA University Foundation, and CPA Michael Ingutia, Director of Special Projects and Alumni Relations at the KCA University. Now, universities have been in the limelight and in the headlines lately because of a shortage of cash. And some of them are basically insolvent. And KCA University, like we've heard this morning, gets all its operating money from the tuition that is paid by students who come to the, ver ver the various products of programs. Now, of course, when you look into the future, you'll have a challenge at some point where you may see a reduction in the number of students enrolling or an increase in the number of students enrolling, but an increase to the needs of those finances. And that's why the KCA University Foundation was established, as you've told us, uh, Rogers, to mobilize resources to help the university stay afloat. Among those things that you've said, research, scholarships, uh, an endowment fund, looking at infrastructure development. Of course, you've got to explain to us how people then can get into this, starting with the research uh, angle. So apart from partnerships with, say, institutions that would like you to be their knowledge partner, how else do you mobilize resources for research, to fund research, and what kind of research? Yeah, thank you. W one, one of the uh, ways in which we are able to mobilize funds through <laughs> research, we, we have, um, you know, partner institutions, and we have organizations, we have farms, we have entities, we have universities, uh, you know, uh, both locally and abroad, then who are able to uh, tap into this space. Uh, we focus much on, um, and, you know, applying for grants that are available for specific uh, areas and research needs and we are also then able to tap into active areas of provisions and options for research then that have been uh, have been floated in terms of and there's so much there's so much money in research mm. and of course this money is very specific on what it needs to do but one of the things then that we believe in as a university is you know, when, when you're able to get into this space and be able to support research, and of course, I have to say at this stage that we are working very closely with our division of uh, uh, research, innovation, and outreach because it is the, it's the organ of the university that is actively mandated to be able to uh, conduct matters research. So we work with a lot of partners and, and these partners, and, and for example, you talk about World Bank, you talk about many other entities, financial uh, entities, mm -hmm. that then are able to float in some money and then you know, we are able to tap in by way of applying for those grants and, and, and reaching out to be able to secure this kind of funding. So so by and large, that is the kind of, there are a number of universities we have partnered with uh, uh, in, in Israel. We have partnered with some universities in the U.S. One of them is Oklahoma State University. And the, the very strong partnership is in the area of carrying out or conducting research and having faculty and student mobility with the aim to be able to support this. So that is one way. But at least the proceeds from these research findings then become the nexus then between the foundation and the foundation brings in the resources and then the university side because remember the foundation is acting on behalf of the university mm -hmm. so <clears throat> sorry so the university then is able like in this case research innovation and outreach then then is able to pick up and and be able to execute the same mm -hmm. but on the same note just allow me to mention that when you talk about innovation like there's something that critically we are doing we want to put up an innovation hub now, how do we put up an innovation hub? We have partners who then come in to say, again, advanced conversations already ongoing, uh, that one of those we are having active conversations with is Safaricom, uh, where they would put up, they would, you know, they would want to put up a space, if a, a whole building, for instance, around seven story, so this, an organization can choose to pick a floor. Mm. So if the cost of a floor is 10 million just for purposes of this discussion mm. and, uh, you know, they decide and say, we want to take a floor, we want to put up innovation hub. They take a floor, Huawei comes and says, we also want to take another floor. Mm. So by the time you get seven different organizations who are tech oriented, then are able to put in funds for a floor 
you end up establishing a whole building and that way then you have uh, created an enabling environment both for research and for innovation so that's really from that front the aspect that we are looking at mm. i just want to add something small so on the side of the university what the university has been able to do is to then create capacity within research innovation and outreach department so we have a full fledged division headed by a deputy vice chancellor professor nyuera and basically they, they have created or we have created capacity to be able now to uh walk the talk in terms of doing the research mm. and being able to ensure that it is actualized yes mm. so what are some of the activities that you then get involved in apart from the research you know connects with other institutions um so how else do you raise this you know much needed funding because one of the things you did speak about was scholarships for students and obviously somebody's getting a scholarship for one for merit because they're very bright and so you're giving them boost or they because they need it financially um so how then are you able to do that that could actually also serve as a model for others who are in the doldrums as we speak today yeah so so how we raise uh, again it depends on what project of the four uh, are we pursuing i think i've explained much on the infrastructure side and the research so for scholarships how we raise these funds the uh, i would want to mention that the university over time has really heavily invested in terms of supporting its students mm -hmm. we have run what we call the work study program mm -hmm. now the work study program was uh, put in place to support uh, the needy students but then uh, they would you see the way the university would have a need for staffing mm. then there are specific <coughs> roles that would be given to students to do mm -hmm. uh, then they, they're able to get some earnings from it and using these earnings and the university is able to uh, turn in to pay their fee yeah. uh, so that has happened and close to about uh, say 1200 students who have gone through that program successfully and in fact there are serious people in society as mm. we speak in mm. terms of being very astute accountants and you know that was able to elevate them uh, then there is also the uh, student engagement program now the student engagement program is for semi skilled category of students you will find a student coming to take accounting um or, or accountancy course as it were mm. but then this student um he has plumbing skills now instead of the university then probably getting to outsource some of these services it then gives the students an opportunity to be able to conduct uh, you know this kind of uh, work mm. and then they get some earnings a student may have cleared CPA up to section 6 these these are fully qualified accountant mm -hmm. but then has chosen to come and join a program uh, to pursue bcom or probably even pro progress with masters so this student then can be able to sit in a finance office and then support finance department right. in their functions yeah. and get paid so this is skill based mm -hmm. so this one is skill based work study program is need based mm -hmm. and then we have another category of scholarship which is called the chancellor scholarship program this is purely for its merit based mm -hmm. so this for really uh, you know extremely bright students then who then get an opportunity to 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 get this kind of uh, of of support actually you need an a minus and above to be able to benefit from this now then there's the overall scholarship spectrum mm -hmm. where um purely for the needy I'll give you one of the things that has happened uh, uh, about two weeks ago. Our DVC in charge of academic and student affairs was able to establish a fund called Tekela Musho Fund under his name. And he was able to put enough a million into this fund. And the reason being, we have experienced a scenario. The last case was a student who had progressed to third year. Then the father passed on. The father was the sole breadwinner mm -hmm. and this student had to drop out mm. and so there was need to lift and that is where the name came mm. in terms of take a so he said can i give the last mile the last push to these particular students and be able to do so that is now so the how part of it yeah, the partners who come together kasneb has, has endowed some amount with us close to three million with the kca university foundation mm -hmm. um we are actively engaging with uh, Madison Insurance, who then are also planning to establish some funds with us, and many other partners whom we have approached and putting in. Now, actively, there is 
the last bit which is uh, activities that we organize from time to time now that takes me for, to the vc and ceos cycling tour mm. to meru mm -hmm. which is scheduled for 7th uh, of april and the vc has decided on his own volition to support these needy students so we have a target of 25 million to raise of course we have a, a grand plan of about 250 million into the scholarship fold but then we have staggered it in terms of pieces that we can be able to fill so on the 7th we are cycling to meru uh, and we have a uh, 10 core cyclists mm -hmm. we have also been gracious enough to receive um, cycling team from Mama Cycling Club, a club that is spearheaded by our first lady um, of the Republic, uh, to be able just to support this initiative. They're coming in just to support. I've sent us some cyclists to be able to, you know, uh, cycle with us all the way as we uh, go to Meru. So, cycling to Meru. Cycling to Meru. So from where? From KCA University. <laughs> <laughs> That if you can do it. <laughs> How <laughs> many kilometers? Uh, 517 kilometers. Return. That is re return. Return, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's Mombasa. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so but, uh -huh. but this is how we have structured it. So okay. we have because we know that your reaction actually simply shows that if we put you on the road, we will experience some trouble. Mm. Uh, my senior here, I know, probably would, would, <laughs> would equally have a challenge. <laughs> but one of the things uh, that we've done, we have professional cyclists, 10 of them, all right, who are now will be on the track from the university all the way to Meru. But then we have a team that will join them, but we are doing it up to China Square. So when we get to China Square, ah. we do a short ceremony, they drop off. Now, the partner, the corporate partners and individuals are invited to support to a tune of 10,000 Kenya shillings per kilometer. So we have corporates who have adopted a cyclist mm. and said i'm going to pay we are going to pay ten thousand per kilometer for the 517 kilometers for a cyclist and then they exclusively exclusively brand that cyclist okay. and remember all this is just the giving back and this is cycling for charity mm -hmm. so that then we are able to raise these funds to uplift the lives and livelihoods of our students. Okay, so this clearly then fills in one of those four bins that you've talked about. Um, so then, are you saying that every shilling then that is recognized from this uh, the cycling tour uh, goes to making sure that students who are either already enrolled or who would like to be enrolled at KCA then have an opportunity to finish a full course? What does it then do for them? Yeah, definitely. That is what it means. So, uh, once... Of course, we already have a framework. We have a policy on scholarships that dictates how then these funds are allocated. Mm. We advertise for these positions. There's a committee of the university that sits then considers all the requests that come so every student has an opportunity and because the cases are many so we must have a criteria of uh, probably identifying who is the most deserving mm. of, of all these applicants and that's why we wanted to increase the base but what is critical this every single coin that is raised from this effort mm. is going into supporting these particular students probably one of the things that i would indicate that students who then are supported through scholarships you change. I'll give you two, two of the cases. We have one of our alumni called Eliud Choge. Uh, you know, uh, Eliud Choge uh, is, is one of, uh, you know, our alumni who benefited from this. Now he works in the UK. Mm. Um, uh, we also have uh, another student called Cheriot, who then was able to benefit, works in the US. But these two gentlemen mm. made a decision that they want to give back. Mm -hmm. And so they decided to sponsor fully two uh, students to, you know, who are then able to take particular programs. So we just want to give an assurance that every single coin that is raised through this effort, then will be able to go into supporting. And probably C.P. Nguti would speak to the aspect that once then you support this particular student, mm -hmm. what does it mean to a community? Mm. Mm. Yeah, so that's something that's really core cool at uh, our philosophy at KCA. We really believe in that access because access to education is an equalizer. So we look at it that in terms of uh, charity, uh, 
let me maybe take a step back. Normally what happens uh, in the society today, if I have a need, I'll go to the, my neighbors or the immediate uh, people that I know mm-hmm. and tell them I have this challenge, I'm dropping out, be able to help me. And some people are able to help in that context. But the approach that uh, they, education may not be the top of what they may choose to help because they will tell you maybe you needed government sponsorship, etc. Mm. They may find reasons not to sponsor you. They may easily sponsor a funeral, they may easily sponsor a medical because those are what touches people. Mm. But we believe education and uh, by we charge less so that people can be able to afford and it's a deliberate uh, thing mm-hmm. that we charge less so that we are affordable and that we give opportunities for people to be able to come and study. And the foundation is playing the role then of ensuring that they support for mm-hmm. those cases that need support so that they can be able to get education and be able to stand on their own so that those families can stand on their own and not then have to ask for money for medical and the other. Because if you educate somebody, then you've given him a chance. He'll be able to uplift his family. Yeah. As the families get uplifted, the community also then gets uplifted. So that's the approach that we are looking at. Mm. Uh, let us try and help by deliberately having the fees affordable and also by creating mechanisms of raising money to support so that then the need for the other support is less. Okay. Um, Rogers, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this in terms of, um, and this is great because you have the institution, you have the foundation, which was which was, you know, established for a particular need. And looking at the ways in which you then go in to raise this necessary funding, have what have you thought about sustainability? Are these events that we look at, like now the cycling tour and other things that you would then do in the future, sustainable then as a mode for attracting funds? Or would you then graduate that into something else later? If you look at the research, the granting, as you spoke of, um, or would it then be a combination of factors to guarantee sustainability of this? Because you know what happens when folks know that we can go to KCA and we'll be able to then get, you know, help if we needed it for an education. The likelihood of that number ballooning is huge in as much as you want uh, higher enrollment then the needs, we cannot run away from the needs that are in society today. So is it sustainable? And then what else would you do to make sure that that pool that you've created then remains full? Wow. Ndu, uh, uh, um, the sustainability of it, yes, it's sustainable. We've thought about this from end to end. Mm. And one of the things then we have chosen to do, for example, this cycling tour, we, we, it's going to be an annual event. Uh, you know, that is going to be uh, run by the foundation on behalf of the university. But that is not the only thing we are doing. We have many other activities. For example, we are also planning to have performing art safaris Mm. because we have a very robust arts team and these are students Mm. and they're going to be uh, conducting shows where, you know, the public can be able to... You know, the good thing when I know that I'm getting into... Uh, or I'm going into a show mm. and every single coin I pay here is going to be able to brighten somebody's uh, you know, future, yeah. uh, then it becomes more robust. So we are using a combination of things mm-hmm. so that we are able to get into long-term sustainability. But the critical side of it, I talked about endowment. Now, endowment is the ultimate plan on sustainability because mm. when, when we talk about endowment, if you give us 20 million, this 20 million, we're not going to be spending it. We invest this 20 million and we only then spend on the proceeds. So mm. that means at no particular time, then are we going to be talking about uh, the absence of funds in terms of that area. So we are going to use a combination of all, all these factors. And of course, this does not take away the primary responsibility mm. from our students as, you know, because they are, have an obligation yeah. and as they join, they're expected to do what? To be able to pay fee. But then we, it would be done in a very regulated manner. Mm-hmm. But our desire is the more you support, the better. Because listen, what happens, the reality is, um, uh, Latif, in your village, uh, if you don't care about what happens to your neighbor's child in, in matters education, and tomorrow 
you grow and you become uh, of course yeah, I, i know you already a millionaire that i know tomorrow but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but of course the investment that you have put in the village um it will not be safe simply because this neighbor's child who did not go to school has gotten into other things and then your own investment becomes you know is at risk mm. and you you end up spending much more to be able to sustain this kind of an environment so mm. it's very very interesting and important that we have the culture of you know philanthropy as philanthropy. we are able to to support and give as we conclude tell us again about what's going to be happening on the 7th of april so it's the vcnc your cycling tour of meru riding from kc you know ndu cycles every weekend So Ndu you have a plan for mm. next weekend. Karibu. Oh, 500 kilometers only. You may do half. Just half. go to Meru and stay there. <laughs> <laughs> so how how do people participate? Those who would like to join the the cycling tour, how can they join? Uh, just shortly and also those who would like maybe to su- support. Uh thank you. So quickly, uh those who do land, want to join, uh you, you know, we have a prevent on Tuesday at the university mm. where our vice chancellor and CEO is going to be able to host a number of uh, you know the partners sponsors and and you know those who have then been able to support so one way is just to you know come and support uh, secondly is to be able to we have a um, you know we have a pay bill that we have uh, established to be able to uh, 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 generate this money so that the general public those who want to throw in some money then they are able to put in some funds that is going into this effort mm-hmm. we also have branded merchandise that we are selling either branded uh, mugs branded bottles water bottles uh, branded t-shirts branded caps so all these we are selling to be able to support mm-hmm. and then for individuals and partners and corporates please reach out to us then we are able to give you an opportunity uh, also to sponsor per kilometer 10000 kenya shillings asante sana and just to give you the pay bill number is 400 200 right yes maybe number 400 and then there's an account number it's a very long one uh, get in touch with KCA University <laughs> Foundation <laughs> to get the details of how you can support this